Make sure that we give uh, Andy a good amount of time here. So, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of work going on all around the world, and we don't always hear about it here in the U.S. We seem to be a little U.S.-centric here, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to bring uh, Andy Brown, CEO of Kantar Media, who is working on a lot of the cross-media uh, solutions in other countries. Um, to come up and give us an overview, particularly in major European countries. So let's give a warm welcome to Andy Brown. Thank you, Jane. Sounds like I'm competing with, with the bar over there um, and losing. But anyway, thank you very much, especially for, for the people who are in the room. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Um, I actually was privileged enough to be around when SIM was born, and it wasn't even called SIM uh, at that point. I was returning, uh, many years ago, I used to sit on the board of a company called AGB Nielsen Media Research, which was a joint venture between Kantar uh, and Nielsen. And we always used to have the board meetings in Amsterdam, for tax reasons, and most of us would fly in and out through Schiphol uh, Airport, and we'd be in the airport lounge. On, after one of those board meetings, um, we were in uh, the airport lounge and sitting with the Nielsen guys, um, and the phone rang. And um, uh, do you mind if I just take this one over the other side um, of the airport lounge? And basically, it was Martin ringing to say, um, well, actually, we've got some funding. We're going to work with a couple of the other agencies and some of the networks, and we're going to build a JIC in the United States. Well, maybe it didn't become a JIC, but it became SIM. So it was, it was an interesting experience. So I was there when it was kind of uh, born, um, and I received it in the presence uh, of Nielsen, which was an interesting thing. OK. All right, let's see if we get this to go forward. That's not the one. It's tr big green one. That's, that's helpful. I'm colorblind. Um, I'll go with the big one. OK, so who are we? Very quickly, and I don't have enough time to go through the slides, so I'm going to go some of this stuff really quickly. Uh, Kantar Media, um, we are a relatively small business uh, in this market uh, currently, but we're quite big uh, around the rest of the world. We have over 6,000 employees, we have 32,000 clients, uh, and we track 3 million brands in different forms, whether that's in terms of advertising monitoring uh, or media uh, monitoring. We do quite a lot of television measurement. Um, we do television measurement in 57 uh, markets around the world. Um, we work some of the services as our own, so they're proprietary services. Some of them are joint industry services where we work with a JIC. Uh, others uh, where we license our technology in, and you, you saw an example of that uh, from our friends at, at Numerous. Um, we also use multiple different solutions, so we have people meter services. We also innovated and we're the first player in set-top box or return path uh, data measurement. And you'll see that we've put the USA uh, on this chart. Uh, because obviously we work uh, with our friends at Comscore, our equity partners at Comscore, uh, in terms of uh, set-top box, box measurement in this country. Um, this is the kind of stuff you know. Um, the home is getting uh, extremely busy in terms of devices, but the television stat is, is still fundamentally important. I think sometimes uh, we sort of overestimate uh, what the consumption on other devices is and what gets used in the home, um, because we base it on the very nice middle-class lifestyles that most of the people in this room live in. And it's not always the same in every place. And I think sometimes we just have to be a little bit careful uh, to run towards everything. Of course, we've got to be ready from a technology point of view, but it isn't always quite as established uh, as people say. But yes, of course, we've got to measure uh, audiences wherever they are. Now, pubs and clubs, uh, is a perennial uh, debate for measurement um, around the world. Some markets, it's, it's included in the measurement. In other cases, it isn't. Some cases, it's included in the measurement, but the agencies won't pay for it because people aren't listening or are able to pay the same degree of attention to the commercials uh, in a pub or club. Personal listening on personal devices, increasingly important, mobile devices, cell phones, etc. all really important. So we talk about 
TV, what's our strategy around measurement? We talk about TV to TV. And what do we mean by that? What we mean by that is television to what we call now total video uh, in terms of measurement. All the different forms. Now, if I press this, is this going to play a little video? Because rather than me try to explain it, I've got some people who are more intelligent than I am to try and explain what total video is. And it doesn't work. So is it possible to click that? Can you do anything with that at the back? Oh, it's playing. Welcome to Inside Media, the show where we take a fresh look at the latest trends and challenges in the media world. Many people are wondering what television means today. Has it all moved online now? And should we still be calling it television at all? Joining me now is our roving reporter, Tom, who's picking up the story. Hello, Jesse. Tom, you're at an electric car dealership. What's the deal with that? That's quite right, Jesse. I've come here because the TV research industry is a little like the automotive industry at present. <laughs> I'm not sure I or the viewers understand that, Tom. Well, there's a lot of talk in the industry about internet taking over television, but if you're watching TV on a television set on Netflix or your iPad, you're still watching TV, just like if you're driving an electric car. You're still driving a car. You just like cars, don't you, Tom? Anyway, that's quite a wide definition of television. How do you go about measuring something so diverse? That's why Kantar Media uses the terms Core TV and Extended TV. Core TV is television that is watched on a TV set. Extended TV is what we watch on devices like phones and tablets. They know the best ways to measure both, so nothing is missed. Whichever way television's consumed. So what we're seeing is that television is no longer defined as a device, but that it's still measurable. Exactly. It's measurable across all devices, a situation that some extend even further and call total video. To be honest with you, Jesse, I don't see what's so new about all of this. I can't even remember a time when I only watched TV on a television. That's because you're not even old enough to drive, Tom. That's all from this edition of Inside Media. Thanks for watching. A couple of the younger members of our client service department there. Um, it's, they're much cheaper as well to employ, by the way. Um, um, employ, I know, sorry. We used to put them up the chimneys. <laughs> Um, once, <laughs> very important from our point of view, um, we do not believe in a, in a cookie cutter uh, approach to audience measurement. It really is uh, horses for courses. And we fundamentally believe that there are different components that go into an audience measurement solution. And we don't necessarily own all of them. And we have to partner uh, in order to get them, which goes back a little bit to some of the conversations uh, that we were talking about with Reno in the, in the fireside chat at the start. And there are lots of different pieces and lots of new players who will come into the space and pick out one particular element of the process that can go in as an ingredient into that cake. But you have to have lots of different ingredients to make the cake. It's quite difficult uh, to do that with just some of the standalone uh, elements. So what do we see as the basic blueprint or the core components for measurement? Um, some of this w really isn't going to surprise you. Uh, we believe fundamentally in a core panel, which will typically be a people meter. We don't see people meters uh, disappearing. Um, we, they may change shape. They may look a little bit smarter. The way in which they pick up uh, and identify content uh, may change. But essentially, they're a core part uh, of the piece. We rely on panels. We rely on people to participate. We also see, though, multiple different solutions being layered in. So you've just heard about the folks in Canada who are trying to bring in now return path data or set top box data. Now, once you get outside uh, the United States, in many markets, we do set top box measurement. However, it tends to be often proprietary to the MPVD. So it's not a syndicated, uh, resold uh, data set in the same way that you have it uh, in this market with our colleagues at Comscore. What that means, though, also sometimes is that it can be quite political. So I'm really interested to see 
whether what happens with numerous in Canada can be applied in a market like mine in the UK, um, where we've been talking about doing this for about seven years, and we cannot get agreement amongst the members of the Joint Industry Committee to do that. And that's because the person who has the most set-top box data is the biggest competitor of the largest terrestrial television uh, network. And that's, and that's an issue. So what is happening now, uh, and that's happening in two or three markets in Europe as well, and I think we're, if you look at what's happening in Italy, so Italy is now building a set meter panel. Uh, so they're actually building out with us, and this might sound familiar to, to those of you in the United States who, who have had set meter only panels uh, in the past in local markets. This is now being done on the national level in Italy to help calibrate and boost the sample sizes um, of the core people meter panel uh, in the Italian market. I mean, personally, um, we, we have to be a little bit careful because the cost of doing that versus the cost of leveraging the set-top box data is very different. It is significantly more expensive uh, to go down that route. So it may or may not be practical. We also believe there's a, a critical role for online census data, and that, by that I predominantly mean the online TV player uh, data, which we can pull in. And also, uh, an increasingly important um, bringing in third-party demographic data. What can we match this with? Whether it's uh, advanced analytics, whether it's data fusion uh, exercises, we see that as a core part uh, of the way television measurement uh, is evolving. Oops, I'll just go back one. We also think it's gonna get faster. One of the things that usually shocks my friends uh, in the US and in other markets in Europe is when I tell them that we measure television uh, in real time, uh, and we have been for 15 years. Uh, in Brazil, uh, in Colombia. This is a service that, that we've run for many, many years. It's not actually used for trading today. It is used largely for programming and driving, uh, changing lineups of, of programs. So what we do is we provide, a, within one minute, um, the ratings and share for each of the networks uh, in the market. And we do that right the way across Latin America. But we are getting increasing um, levels of conversation with clients who now want to try and use it uh, from a, a commercial point of view. Um, and as you can imagine, it, that would be somewhat disruptive um, in the market, but, but it's a demand. Um, so I was asked to talk about uh, the difference and some of the different models uh, that are operating in Europe, and I've, and I've spoken about a couple of them. But essentially, the, we, we see it falling broadly into three uh, different types of model uh, of measurement. Um, we've got what, what we call the fusion model. Um, and I remember standing in front of an audience in the United States 15 years ago trying to describe fusion. Um, and um, as, as, David, as David's laughing loudest, yes, and I was that, I was that heretic. Um, and one day I'll tell you the story about how it all changed and the hand that I had in Nielsen and Pete Doe ending up creating the fusion product that they created in, in the United States. But that one's over a glass of wine afterwards. But it's a true story, it's a good one too. Um, so yes, I was that heretic talking about fusion, it's now widespread, uh, imputing data based on known uh, variables. So where we're seeing the unification of online data, we're quite often using an existing single source survey, so we supply a service in, in many markets in the world called TGI, uh, and we use that overlap of the internet information or the digital information with the analog, with the television information, and we use that to calibrate and drive uh, the fusion. The second model uh, is typically single source, so you build a panel where you have both elements uh, of data together in the same panel, and then we use that overlap or that duplication to model that across back into, so that you can link the TV panel data with the internet currency data, and we do this with our, our friends at Comscore. And the third piece, uh, which is an interesting one, uh, is also when we then bring in uh, set-top box data or return path data. And this is something, incidentally, um, that we've been talking to Comscore about in a number of markets and talking to them about uh, with a number of clients, including one or two uh, in this market. So who was asking at the start about whether Comscore's uh, still alive? Absolutely. Um, and Comscore is on an investment path as well. Okay. Um, so let me just show you some of that stuff, conscious of the time. Uh, we'll start home for me. Um, Barb 
uh, Joint Industry Committee, um, one of the longest established joint industry committees uh, in the world. We had all the different broadcasters all with their own uh, capture of their, their online player, their, their catch-up service or their on-demand uh, service. All had different tags, um, all producing slightly different metrics um, and distributing them out into the market. Uh, recipe for, for confusion, not a great uh, way to go forward. We agreed with Barb to put a standard tag in, so we now have a tag uh, in all players. Uh, it's independently audited. And, and by the way, that takes time. That is one of the barriers to, to measurement. And it's not usually the guy in the ad department, it's not the research director, it's usually somebody in the production or the presentation department who has a problem with you putting the tag uh, into the player. So these, there's people there, it, it can be really quite a long process uh, to actually get networks uh, to put the tags into the players. What do we collect? Uh, we collect total viewing time uh, for the number of the minutes of the devices that have received the content. Um, but we also then uh, produce at what we call average program streaming, or average program streams uh, into the data. Just to try and give you quickly an idea of the, what the data actually looks like. So this is a, uh, this I think has played uh, in the States. It, it, I think it was on AMC. Um, it was probably one of the best uh, dramas in the UK last year in terms of ratings and, and general feedback. Um, high quality drama, this was the last episode, I think there were four episodes uh, in the series. But you can see, you know, in terms of the split of the audience, 47% of the audience for, for this was live on, I think it was Sunday evening around about 9pm. Um, and you can see that the contribution there on the extreme right, sorry, I should explain what Vosdal is. Uh, every market likes to create their own acronyms. Uh, Barb in the UK creates this one called Vosdal, which is viewing on same day as live. That is, you played back. <laughs> there you go, that's one to impress your friends at dinner parties with. Um, um, but it's contributing, as you can see, it's contributing around about 5% of the audience. And I think, again, one of the important things um, around this whole extension of measurement and I, and I think this is a really important point. And, and you could say I would say this, but it, but it is really important. Most of the players in the industry have spent a huge amount of money developing technologies and content and distribution vehicles through digital. And it's almost as though when it came to the measurement bit, they forgot to put that in the budget. And it, and and it becomes very difficult because quite often what happens is you have this kind of sticker shock uh, where people go, it costs that, and I get that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And that's true of most innovative media measurement. You have to disproportionately invest uh, in the audience measurement relative to the ad dollars slash audience that you're going to deliver. And of course, over time, that should equalize. But you have to disproportionately invest. And I think that uh, is one of the key messages I'd, I'd like people in the room to, to get because it's a real issue for us. Um, and economics, of course, are one of the key drivers of whether you end up with a fusion model or a calibration model, et cetera. So just to finish off then, you have a, a program which is very heavy on its live, which is Britain's Got Talent, where over two thirds of the audience uh, were watching live. And we only had 2% uh, of people who, who watched it through the, the player. What do we do? Um, we, we build the data. So in, in the UK, we have what we call a single source model. So this was where we had a calibration panel. So we have people who have got uh, a software meter as well as the people meter in their home. So we're capturing on a relatively small sample through that panel, single source data about their consumption across tablets, their consumption across uh, PCs, and of course through the television sets via the meter. What we then do is to use that information to inform the census uh, data and to, to blend that with the census data in order to create person by person information for what we call uh, the extended TV. Uh, and I'm just zapping through a few here because we don't have that much. I've got five minutes left, so I'm going faster. So whoop, we're going off to Norway. Um, Norway, I've, I've chosen Norway because it's also one of the probably the most complex uh, audience measurement service that. I'm aware of, and somebody will tell me there's a, there's a more complex one when I go over to the, the drinks break. Um, 
but it is possibly the most complex uh, service uh, in the market. It's, it's from a not a JIC, it's, we call these a mock, which is a media owner committee. So the TV networks themselves get together, determine the specification, put out a tender, uh, and then they usually appoint us to, to do it. That's a joke, come on. <laughs> to, all, to all the Nielsen people in the room, and the GFK people in the room. Um, so what's interesting about this one, they have an in-home panel. Um, so there's an in-home panel with people meters uh, capturing the content uh, through the TV set. We also work with our colleagues from France, from Medimetrie. So we licensed the Medimetrie uh, portable meter solution, which is known as Rate on Air, which is not the brand name I'd have chosen, but it's called Rate on Air. Probably translates to something really cool in French, but it doesn't do so well in English. So two panels. We then do a fusion uh, between the panels uh, in order to get the single source data. And then we blend in uh, online census data to, to give you the total picture. Key component of this um, is what is the content ID. So how can we know what the content is? There are, I've heard this a couple of times over the last six months. Everybody's talking about ACR meters in the US. I've, I've got an ACR meter. Well, most people meter technology is ACR. It comes through one of two different solutions. It either comes through an audio match, where you take a sample of the sound, match it to a reference site, or it comes through an embedded code um, or watermark, uh, which that reader or which that meter uh, will then read. And in the, in the Norwegian situation, we've put that code in every single piece of content. So we have to work with the broadcasters and the content producers to get that code in the system. That code is the same code, um, I have to do this, it's, I have to do that. Jane told me I had to do this. Um, <laughs> that's the same code um, that is now being used as the standard for watermarking uh, in the United States for content um, ID. And we're delighted, obviously, um, to be working with SIM and uh, the SMPTE uh, to deliver that uh, into this market. And hopefully you'll hear a lot more about that very shortly. Uh, back to Norway. Um, they have built, uh, or we're in the process of building uh, a new panel for them here. It will also start to include, uh, whoops, it'll also start to include other solutions. So they're talking about a 28 day uh, time shift incorporated into the measurement. Uh, it will include uh, integration with the online currency. Uh, there's a discussion about upgrading the meters. The meters can be upgraded uh, to do real time. The data is then fused to the purchase panel data, to world panel. Uh, in Norway, so they're able to build advanced audiences uh, based on, on purchase of uh, packaged goods. Uh, they are talking about building a program app, programmatic API uh, to go out and drive digital uh, from the back of the people meter solution. Uh, and there's also going to be uh, a plan for, a, for an audience engagement uh, metric as well, so some kind of audience appreciation. A um, couple of words about digital pure plays. Um, it's not necessarily all about TV networks, and obviously there's been a lot of uh, discussion around the world um, about how do we work uh, with the big digital players. So how do they how do they get a seat at the table for audience measurement? And it's not and it's not easy. Um, and what one or two of the, the players have done is to actually build their own solutions. So in a, in several markets around the world, uh, Google have built uh, their own single source cr cross platform measurement solutions. So in the UK, we manage a panel uh, for Google. Um, it's 3,000 uh, home panel. Uh, we measure all connected devices with a router meter. We also have a people meter sitting in those homes. And then one third of those homes, we also have their purchase uh, data, the packaged goods purchase data. So they have a kind of single source cross platform. Uh, they also have, we're also administering uh, not just the router, but also uh, a mobile uh, measurement device. So we have a, a Google, proprietary Google mo mobile measurement device on that business. And we ship all of that data into Google. We don't know what Google does with it. They pull it all together and they then produce solutions for the market off the back of that. And it, it's a challenge. And quite often, as I go around the world talking to, to our different countries and our different clients in those markets, there is a question about you know, where's Google, where are Facebook? Uh, in terms of this measurement, and uh, and then Reno touched on some of that that earlier on, but I think but I think what I would say, and I know there's a, there's 
at least somebody here from Facebook, I think Daniel's here from Facebook. What we've had is probably more conversations with Google and Facebook around measurement uh, of television and video in the last six months than we've probably had in the last three years. Uh, they're very keen to play. And I think one of the challenges, of course, is how do we bring them into the family um, with the other stakeholders? And it's going to take time. And I think it's also going to require you know, some compromise on both sides. Um, I think it requires some compromise on the part of Google and Facebook uh, in terms of definitions of viewing to something that would be more akin uh, to some of the television measurement viewing standards. And I think also some of the TV networks are going to have to be a bit braver um, if they're going to start wanting to look at this data side by side. Both companies are very much on the front foot uh, in terms of wanting to be measured uh, in the solutions. So, as you know, the biggest block to all of this is money um, and politics. Um, and I've covered most of the, the different uh, pieces around that. Um, you know, I, for me, I, I'm probably thinking, I think it's more exciting now what I do than it was 10 years ago. Uh, there's so much more happening, there's more innovation, there's new challenges, all of that, that new technology. It's creating new opportunities. Uh, it's creating uh, new relationships. And why not leave you with a pick? You know that's the answer. Um, and I'm going to leave you with that as my, my parting shot. Everything uh, is measurable. It's just a question of money and politics. Thank you very much for listening.